There was once a guy living in our neighborhood named Jimmy. He often got picked on a lot for being a confident and funny guy. His mouth tended to get him into a lot of trouble and he seldom learned his lesson. He was just very content with who he was and refused to change it. When people asked him why he let them wail on him for his blunt comedy and wisecracks, he'd smirk and say, Honesty is the best policy. At least they're not hiding anything from me and neither am I from them. One of the kids he inadvertently pissed off with a rather crude joke was something of a psychopath with a sadistic streak who didn't take too kindly to the insult. So he rounded up the other guys who didn't like Jimmy and they cornered him after school in the science room. Your mouth got you into this. I want you to remember that. Brett, the ringleader, told him as he looked into Jimmy's terrified eyes. They grabbed some formic acid stored in the lab and threw it in his face. They stood around him, watching him scream in agony as it ate through his flesh before snickering and running out, pretending to be concerned and wanting help for him. When the paramedics arrived and were attending to Jimmy, who could no longer scream, the principal asked the boys if they knew what happened. Brett had explained they were walking past when they saw Jimmy skulking around the lab room. By the time they got in there, he was already in that state. The other members joined in and backed up Brett with other fake details as Jimmy tried to protest in silent agony. The principal nodded and told him he would speak to them after he had gotten away with Jimmy and gotten his side of the story after he was out of the hospital. A few days passed and Jimmy was kept in ICU with bandages on his face, the doctors salvaging what little they could, his vision still intact in one eye, and his jaw withstanding despite the loss of flesh. He was still unable to speak and refused to respond to anyone. He just sat there, eyes unblinking and staring at the ceiling, bloodshot and filled with animosity. When he was discharged some time later, he would not respond to anyone with anything other than the word liars. His social life gone, unable to smile or even crack a joke anymore, he secluded himself in his room and began planning. Sick, vindictive thoughts started appearing in his mind. He would get them all, one by one, decimate them, slice them, burn them. He waited patiently until the group would be vulnerable. Late at night, when they said their goodbyes, and went home separately. That's when he would strike. That weekend, Brett had received a package in the mail. Curiously, he opened it to find a VHS tape with the words, For You, etched crudely onto the front. He put it in and played it. It was a crudely recorded home video by an unknown cameraman who didn't speak at all for the duration of the film. It began with the camera pointing at the date on a newspaper. It was yesterday. As he zoomed out, you could see it was in a basement, a single flickering light bulb hanging above and casting an uncomfortable scene. By the time he completely zoomed out, it was apparent that this was no normal video. In front of the cameraman, and on his hands and knees, was one of Brent's friends. He was naked a dirty blindfold around his face and a crude gag in his mouth. He was covered in blood, horrific burns, and several lacerations and wounds. One particularly large one on his back stood out that almost looked like a word. The cameraman, with gloved hands, took the gag out of the crying boy's mouth, and immediately he begged to go home. Please, please let me go, man. I, I did what you wanted. Oh, God. Jesse, Mike, Keith, you made me butcher them. I just want to go home, man. Please. I'm sorry, guys. I'm so, so sorry. He just kept repeating it over and over, rocking back and forth as he did so. Brett's legs began to shake, and he felt the bile rise in his stomach. He could see the burned, mangled bodies in the backgrounds the bodies of his friends. All of them had markings on their body in deep, large cuts. The cameraman reached out to the boy's chin and lifted it up, encouraging him to stand. He did so obediently, 
as he was led silently to a door off screen, whimpering. Brent could now see what had been cut onto his friend's back. It was the word liar. The camera then cuts out temporarily. When it restarts, they're no longer inside. Instead, out in the cold snow on the outskirts of the woods, and it doesn't appear to be the original man holding the camera anymore. It's Brett's friend. He's whimpering and shivering as he holds the camera in one place for 30 seconds, pointing at some trees in the distance, hearing footsteps draw ever nearer. Where are you, man? You said I could go. You said I could go. The boy was screaming and crying, frightened out of his mind as the sound of crunching drew nearer from seemingly every angle. It stopped. He turns around to see the mangled face of Jimmy, a horrifying howl blazes through the speakers, and the word liars appears before the tape abruptly ends. Rip then feels faint and darts to lock the front door, knowing what was coming. As he turns to run for it, however, he immediately hits something and falls backwards. He looks up and screams. The last thing he ever sees is Jimmy's face contorting into a sick, twisted smile. The last thing he ever hears is liars as acid runs down his face and begins to slowly eat away at his flesh.